Welcome to the broadcast. We are continuing our series this morning titled Back to School. Let's open our Bibles to the book of Proverbs chapter 3 and we will note verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. May God have a blessing to the hearers of his red word. This morning we will learn wisdom will direct her students. We've already discussed in the previous sessions that there's two schools are beckoning for us to enroll. The school of wisdom and the school for fools. We hope this morning that you have enrolled in the school of wisdom. And yes, wisdom will direct her students and we're going to learn that this morning. We know in verse 5 and 6, take a good look at it. Keep your Bibles open. These are precious promises to every believer who want to know and do God's will in every area of life. That's right. But now I want to warn you. There are certain conditions that we must meet before God can direct our paths. Oh, that's right. It's not automatic. See, some teach that it's just automatic. You know, people be, Oh, I'm blessed and highly favored. Oh, I'm the Lord. Ah, 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 ah. No, let me correct you this morning. Solomon make us aware in this chapter 3 that there are some conditions that we must meet. Before God can direct our paths. That's right. It's for him to be exact. Number one. Is recorded here in chapter 3 verses 1 to 4. And that first one is. We must listen. To the word. Let's know he said. My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. For length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. So here he's making us understand that we must ask the Holy Spirit to write the Bible on our hearts. And you, there's, a, there's a greater reference there to this same thing that I'm explaining to you in 2 Corinthians 3 verse 1 to 3. See, the better you know your Bible, the better you will know God's will for your life. Now, some of you don't know your Bible. If I close certain books out, you don't know which direction to turn. Thank God they give you an index at the beginning of the Bible. And, and praise God. But you need to know your Bible. One young man came to me and he said, Well, I'm in this book called Job. I said, well, Show me where that book is in the Bible. I ain't never heard of no book called Job. 
And then when he turned, I said, oh, that ain't Job, that's Job. <laughs> See, he, he ain't fooling nobody. He ain't in his Bible. We, we need to get in our Bible. So we must listen to the word. Listen to the word. Are you listening to the word? Are you listening to what everybody else say? You you listen to what the status quo. Well, I don't really read my word, preacher. I just I just go to CNN and I get the latest update. Child, that ain't your word. You need to get in the word and stay there and stay in the word. Praise God. You know the psalmist said in Psalms one eighteen, "Thy word have I hid in my heart." That I might not sin against thee. You need to get in the word. The more you're in the word. It'll keep you from sin. Oh hallelujah. Remember wisdom. Will direct her students. Second thing. That's conditional. Is in verses 5 to 10. And here he's saying. We must obey the word. We first got to listen to the word. Here's the second condition. We need to obey the word. Look what he said in verses 5 to 10. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh. Uh oh. And strength to your bone. It will be health to your flesh. That's a, that's one of the healing scripture. It'll be health. What will be a health to the word? If you obey the word, see, it's a condition. If you obey the word, it will be health to your flesh and strength to your bone. There's your medicine right there. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase, so your bonds will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. So what he's saying, man, you you got to give. You got to pay your tithes. And he said, the first fruits of your increase, not the leftover. See, some of us, we won't pay our tithes. Well, preacher, I, I, I'm not part of a church. That No excuse. If you don't even attend a church, you ought to pay your tithes somewhere to some church. Oh, hallelujah. You need to be a member, but you need to pay your tithe. It's a blessing in just paying your tithes. Oh, hallelujah. He said the first fruits of your increase. And then there's a promise there. Look at verse 10. So your bonds will be filled with plenty. If your bonds ain't filled with plenty. In other words, if you ain't got good money in the bank, maybe it's because you ain't paying your time. You ain't participating in off. You're not giving. Because he said if you do it, oh hallelujah, you'll have an overflow. <laughs> Praise God. You'll be working in the overflow. Hallelujah. So he said, obey the word. See, let me say this. See, when he said, and lean not to your own understanding. Some think he's like saying, don't think. He, that is not what the word is saying. Lord wants you to think. That's why he gave you a brain. And some of your teaching and upbringing... You know, come on now, and God placed in each of us a conscience. Your conscience a lot of time will condemn you and, and, uh, and speak to you and say, don't do such and such and such. That's right. So what is he saying, preacher? I'm glad you asked. He's not saying don't use your brain, but that we should not trust our own ideals. We need to ask God to direct us. Hold your place there in Proverbs 3. And let's go to the New Testament. Jesus' brother, James. That's right. 
in the book of James, James said in chapter 1, verse 5, If any of you like wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Have you ever just asked God, Lord, I need wisdom in this situation. I need wisdom. Should I do this or should I do that? And you know, I like when it when it comes to this, I like to pray this, Lord, if this ain't the direction you want me to go, close that door. But if it is the direction you want me to take, open that door. Oh, hallelujah. You know, the Lord has saved me from many shipwreck because I asked him and he closed that door. Well, I didn't have to go through that and suffer, huh? Or lose, huh? But then when he said yes to that open door, oh, praise God. It was very successful. Oh, hallelujah. So, first we must listen to the word. Then we need to obey the word. Then, the third condition is in verse 11 and 12. Let's look at it. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord. Nor detest his correction, for whom the Lord loves, he corrects. Just as a father, the son in whom he delights. Now, what he's saying here, in this two verses, these two verses, He's saying the condition is that we need to submit to the word. That's right. We need to submit to the word. And what he's trying to get us to understand is that sometimes, listen to me, sometimes God has to chasten us to bring us into his perfect will. That's right. He have to do that sometime. And I know you you you, you just you don't you just don't like it. Well, let's go to the book of Hebrews chapter 12 because this writer gives us a better understanding of what Solomon is saying. Let's pick it up in Hebrews 12 verse 5 to verse 11. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as to sons. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. Now, now where, where, where do we just read that? That's right. You paying attention this morning. We just read that in Proverbs 3, verse 11 and 12. So here the New Testament writer is referring back to what Solomon said in Proverbs 3, 11 and 12. That we need to submit to the word. And yes, it's a blessing when God has to chasten us. To bring us into his perfect will. Now let's read verse 7 to 11. If you endure chastening. God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening of which all have become partakers. Then you are illegitimate and not sons. Furthermore, we have had human fathers who correct us, and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? For they indeed for a few days 
choosing us as seemed best to them, but he for our profit, that we may be partakers, guess what, of his holiness. Now no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Now, now let me summarize this into better language where you can understand. When we misbehave, growing up as children, come on, y'all, y'all know what I'm talking about. And my mind, they will go get a peach switch or belt or go get a limb off some scrubbery or a, a hedge and oh they will sting our little legs and spank us and correct us and as the Hebrew writer said uh, I want you to know no chasing seem to be joyful for the present and you know, I, I guess we need to use this on our parents when we was coming up. This same scripture, cause I, I still ain't got a good understanding of some of the things they would tell us before they would spank us. Come on now, y'all, y'all help me this morning. They would say, now, now they finna spank us, and they say, you know, this gonna hurt me more than it hurt you. Really. You whipping me and I'm hollering and screaming and you steady applying the whipping the, on my skin and you tell me it's hurting you more. I ain't quite figured that out. How about you? And then, but it corrected us. That's what a father does. That's what a parent does. Amen. I guarantee you if they whip you right, you wouldn't do that no more. If you think of when my oldest brother Anthony and I left the house and we was over playing with my cousins over on 4th Street. And oh, we was having a time in our life, but you know what we failed to do? We failed to get permission from our father to go to their house. And you ever been playing and having a good time and you, you sense, listen to me, you sense Somebody was watching you. And there I was in the front yard. And boy, we was having a good old time with our cousin. We was having a good time. Oh, my, my, my. And all of a sudden, I sensed and I stopped. And I sensed somebody was looking at me. I turned around and there was our dad. Oh, Lord of mercy. Ooh, and he had a belt in his hand. Oh, hallelujah. And let me tell you something. We was on 4th Street and we lived on 2nd Street. And my dad said, uh-huh. Now, didn't I tell y'all, don't leave the house till you get permission. You know, I ain't know that old man could run so fast. He whipped us all the way, Anthony and I, from 4th Street to 2nd Street. And you think we would get some help from the, the people on their porch and all. Them, them adult folks that are, get up, Mr. Lines, get up, get up. And my dad running behind her and he kept up with her. He whipped us all the way home. But I guarantee you this. I guarantee you this. We didn't leave the house any other time without getting permission. Oh, hallelujah. And, and you know why I'm there? I, I want to, y'all help me, help me with this one. You know, when our mother would spank us, and I know it was correct us, and thank God for, but I never understood. Y'all help preacher. Y'all call me, email me, text me, make me understand what it meant when they was whipping you a good, giving you a good old fashioned whipping. And then all of a sudden she said, dry it up. Dry what up? You mean you want my tears to stop flowing and stop in the middle of somewhere and back up? I ain't got that understanding yet, but they would say, dry it up. Well, let me move on. Y'all, y'all help me. Y'all, y'all just get in touch. Help me with that, okay? So what he's saying.
and submit to the word. Sometimes God has to chasten us to bring us into his perfect will. Let me say this before I move on. If you are attending a church, whether you save or you not save, it doesn't make no difference. You can be a believer. Because sometimes y'all get slack. Sometimes y'all drifting. Sometimes you get this cold and you need to be motivated. But if the word, I'm talking about the word coming being ministered from the preacher and the word don't never correct you, you're in the wrong place. That's right. Pastor Lon said it. The, the word ain't never Got into your business. You in the wrong place. The word ain't never got all into what you doing right now. And you think you got it here. Uh-uh. The word's supposed to cut like a knife. It's supposed to get all into your business. Oh, hallelujah. I hope the word getting into your business right now. Oh, hallelujah. You, because he, God, the, the reason here, the Hebrew writer getting the to understand, he loves us. Don't miss that. He loves us. Oh, praise God. That we may be partakers of his holiness. I'm glad he correct me. See, y'all, I'm glad when I get, oh, out of, out of, out of, off the straight and narrow, he corrects me. Stay me with that peace switch. Get back where you belong. On the straight and narrow way. Let's go praise God to our final condition. We learned then that uh, wisdom will direct her students. And the, the conditions are we must listen to the word. Uh, we must obey the word. We must submit to the word. And then finally in verses, let's go back to Proverbs, chapter 3, verses 13 to 26. Uh, the condition is treasure the word. Treasure the word. Let's pick it up at verse 13. Happy is the man who finds wisdom. And the man who gains understanding. For the proceeds are better than the profits of silver. And her gain than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies. And all the things you may desire cannot compare with her. Length of days is in her right hand. Did you see that? In her left hand, riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness. And all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her. And happy are all who retain her. The Lord by wisdom founded the earth. By understanding, he established the heavens. By his knowledge, the depths were broken up and clouds dropped down the dew. My son, woo, my son, let them not depart from your eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. So they will be life to your soul and grace to your neck. Then you will walk safely in your way and your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. Yes, you will lie down and your sleep, look at here y'all, your sleep will be sweet. Oh, hallelujah! Do not be afraid of sudden terror, nor of trouble from the wicked when it comes. For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. 
Oh, hallelujah. So what he's trying to get us to see here is to treasure the word. In other words, put Christ first. And this is a reference to Matthew 6.33 where he says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. See, some of you got it backwards. You're doing everything else and making him last. You, you're making him the leftovers. No, seek first the kingdom of God. Oh, hallelujah. So, treasure the word. So Solomon, as we just read, in chapter 3 of Proverbs, verse 21 to 26, shares with us the list of blessings. And you need to read it again for your, for your own benefit. These are the blessings that come to believers who let the word direct their paths. Every part of the body should be controlled by the word. Oh, hallelujah. That's right. Get in the word and stay there. Stay there till Jesus come. So what is he saying here? The school of wisdom. Wisdom will direct her students. And yes, it's conditional. It's not automatic. The conditions are, yes, you got to listen to the word. You got to obey the word. You got to submit to the word. And you got to treasure the word. Oh, hallelujah. And all oh, children, when you do these things, there's a blessing in it for us. Oh, hallelujah. And when the Lord correct you, don't. Don't have a temper tantrum. But according to the scripture, you need to rejoice. I'm so glad the Lord loves me that he corrected me. And boy, when he took that switch and stained my legs, I got back where I belong on the straight and narrow. And I'm glad I am enrolled in the school of wisdom. Let us return on next week where we will go a little further in the school of wisdom since we are back to school and remember to give thanks.